I released uh, Ginger Me. I spoke about about it. This was like what eight, yeah. nine years ago when yeah, I right. did. I mean, the um, records are there. The, yeah, it was in, where we did go is talking about the ills in in the country. Yeah, will be spoke about Galam say four years ago. Yeah, you know so. Um, yeah, I've been, I've been, and if you look, check my my Twitter mm. and a few of my social media handles. I've been talking about how um, Ghana is a time, is a, is a time, bomb. time bomb, it's yeah. a time bomb, mm. and it's ticking, you know. And I, I think we're getting closer to a big explosion. But I hope that um, authorities will pay particular attention, and uh, something will be done about it. But what, what do what do protesters sometimes get wrong? Because today's on, for instance, is the first of three days to happen. We hear. What do they get wrong? Because they are doing it in solidarity, um, in connection with those that are in, in incarceration now. Mm. So protesters protesting for protesters, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, authority will tell you some went out of their way. Those who they picked up and all, and, all, and all that in trying to do this. Yes, why they are doing it is also very very crucial. We are watching under our very own watch. It's mm. our, our 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 forest reserves depleting. Mm. You know, it's either uh, the big man is willing it to his family member <laughs> or someone is digging gold out of it and messing it up and so yes we need to speak about it but in speaking about it or protesting what do they get wrong sometimes what are they not doing right i mean protesters people who choose to be part of the protest well i, I think that we just need to do it lawfully i mean i'm sure oftentimes the police avail themselves to sort of um, brief protesters or people who lead the protest on what to, what is is to be done so i think that um, they just need to um, follow the laws we need to go beyond emotions Man, that now the, but the funny thing is um without emotions sometimes <laughs> it's as though you cannot really express the way you really want to express um but uh, yeah, it needs to be done lawfully. That's that's the most important thing, because we're in a country that's governed by laws. Mm -hmm. And so obviously, um, when the laws catch up with you, you you'd face it. But then, I wouldn't say who is right or who is wrong. It could be out of um, ignorance. It could be yeah, mostly it's ignorance when you really don't know what the law says about these things. That's why I'm saying that maybe people who lead it can guide through their social media or even talking amongst themselves that, okay, we're going here, we won't go here because we've been told not to come here, don't destroy things. Because then also, other people, external external people must not suffer, um, you know, when when we are protesting. And so that's, that's also very important because then you have other people taking advantage mm. of the real issue mm. to want to misbehave. Mm. And so these are all these are all factors that they need some to also choose to stay away because look um they think it's unsafe once your face is seen people can come after you people who are championing it. for you who has done it through your 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 talent your craft um have you had such incident before unknown people trying to call your phone and because you sang this song and all that i want to just want to know how real it is out there when people no. want to stand up for the right thing well, have you, do you have a personal experience well i haven't i haven't had that what well i just noticed is probably at a point or at that point maybe because things have not happened people thought that uh, we, we don't want to pay attention that's just like it's it's not for us it's, it's not our thing you mm -hmm. know apart from that i mean but it didn't stop me from speaking you know and most of my performances have been very vocal about um us standing for the right thing and so for me i haven't received any threats mm -hmm. you know i haven't that's why i said you can still um, air out your views and not really have to insult or um, abuse anybody. You can speak your mind. I'm not happy about this, mm. you know. So yeah. Trigmatics are guest conversations that are just way away from the music and all that. What, what's actually been going on with you? Well, I think um, for the past few years, I've I've still been around, mm. but mostly. Um, in the back, um, still working for the industry and for Ghana. Um, I've been, I've been, a f I used to be a friend to the National Folklore Board. Oh, okay. Um, where we did a few projects, uh, we launched the folklore clubs and a few, a few other projects with the previous um, director. Then I became a board member mm. on uh, the folklore board. Oh wow. Um, 
I've been part of a few uh, movements, the Ghana Music Alliance, when we were pushing um, for the right things to be done um, within our Ghana music industry. Um, a lot of people thought we were targeting Gamro, but <laughs> um, yeah, the, what we really stood for was for every musician or music player to be satisfied. You know, everybody along the value chain to be satisfied. I've been actively involved in partnerships between, um, uh, you know, industry enablers and then industry players mm. uh, as well. And so I've always been around. I've just not, um, some of these ones, you can't really put them out. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, you yeah, work quietly as we can. I've had a school club running for maybe five to six years um, in a, quite a number of schools um, in Ghana. Done... Uh, music education programs and then also running the African Music Business Dialogue mm. for the past three years. You've been busy. Yeah. You've been busy. Yeah. Forgive our ignorance. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I think we expect so much from you musically instead. Yeah, exactly. But, but where do you find fulfillment in doing all of these things which sound great, you know, still working to foster uh, all the good things that the Ghana music deserves especially. Yeah. That versus actually being on the scene like you used to. I mean, where's, where's the fulfillment for you? Well, I think um, the fulfillment is in doing all these things. Okay. Um, for me, I mean, for example, last year when we hosted African Music Business Dialogue in Zambia, it was a very fulfilling moment for me because we started small and we, found, we find ourselves another, in another African country. And then this year, um, which I, I still think is our biggest, which we did again in Ghana in March, I had a full house you know and we're doing again in 2025 it's going to be more like a festival um for me these are things that never leave you never leave you know they they, they stay because then you have the opportunity to ch touch another person's life i'm not big on on fame i'm not big on those things honestly um some of my friends um bring in all kinds of ideas and then i listen but in my mind like i really know what i want to achieve um i am i'm very fulfilled when lives are touched and when i get to for example in the first school when i where i started my club a lot of the parents were not so enthused about it but i i i, I through the club said to the school authorities that look music has been taken out of the curriculum think about all the music teachers that lost their jobs you know look at all the students that are going to school to learn music from Winneba. where do they take it you know because also the industry doesn't open up for trained uh, um, um, musicians and music experts and so what happens to all of them because art development is also not a big thing in the country and so what happens there are no conservatories where you can employ people to come and teach and so we need to have an informal way of, of, of teaching it, which I have started in a small way. I wish that there would be a bigger com uh, community of us. And thankfully, uh, I wasn't around, but um, my brother, um, Richie from Lynx, launched uh, Live the Music. And that captures also a part or a bit of what um, I'm doing. And so for me, we need to encourage more of that. Yes, it's good to play the shows and all of that get the fame but that brings uh, everything to you but then it's about also about giving giving back you know it's more about giving back for me than just um and i always say i have a i have a plan do you ghost write um i mean for some folks uh, I mean, that's oh true. yes like you yeah. ghost you do you do ghost writing yes okay i mean apart apart from that even scoring of films ah. yeah i've done a few a few of that in the past and even in recent times like i just did a film together with chris Atto and um an american producer um which is yet to but it is being it's been to the king's festival and all of that so i'm oh. just waiting for them to release the film um apart from that i mean i've been a guest judge on uh, amazing voices in south africa mm. which was a pan-african show and so it captured all of africa most of africa and um yeah, a few talent development. I work with the EU on um, other residency here in Ghana. 
and uh, I've been part of a creative arts agency when they were creating a curriculum for the creative arts school. You know, no, no doubt, listening to you and uh, all, all, all that you've been doing, no doubt that, look, um, there's nothing to prove. I mean, whether you're singing it or you're being part of all this, mm. there's nothing to prove. Meaning, make you, you become a colossal when it comes to ideas on the industry. Yeah. And I'm glad you've done this with other people in other, you know, atmospheres. You like, you, you mentioned that they thought you were targeting Gamro, but honestly, in all honesty, is it the best we can get from Gamro? Look, a lot of your colleagues, where you're seated, across the table, we've had these conversations. Some will tell you how much they get by, by the end of forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, someone waited 10 years just to receive something that was just even uh, not, not up to 500 Ghana cities yeah. and all these things happening. What if you were targeting Gamera anyway? I mean, are we satisfied? You've got a whole po a pool of knowledge and I don't know why they don't tap into it. Must every executive on any board that has to do with music be outside music? Why are we not having more people who are into music itself, who have lived it? In essence, I'm trying to find out. Even if you were targeting Gamro, was it not a just cause? Oh, it was. What? I mean, it was. We sat down with them, actually. Yeah. Um, but it's all part of politics and maybe propaganda. Um when we sat and had conversations, these were not televised. Oh, yeah. You know, but then the narrative that maybe they themselves will put out is, ah, these people, everybody's coming for us. It's like, we're witch hunting some individuals, but it wasn't even about that. We wanted the best for the industry. But um, not too long ago, there's been a very important conversation that we've had. I was in that meeting myself, where Musica led that conversation they're trying to bring a system which is like uh, accepted everywhere that can help in collecting and, and collating uh, funds for, for artists because it's not just, it's not like a simple structure. There must be proper understanding when it comes to who owns what. It starts with who owns what. So it starts from the studio, right from the studio, who who's supposed to own what, and then it moves to when it gets to the distributors and the end users and then and then it's, it's there's nothing emotional about it it's pure business and the principles must be respected and must be followed and so um yeah it was a just cause we we still went through with it we pushed and pushed and pushed we found out a few things which i mean i think um it, it led to uh, we, we had found out that gamma didn't have the license to operate and so now I don't know if it's been restored, but the Attorney General's office held on to it, you know, to further notice. I don't know if it's been restored. Like I said, I don't know if it's been restored. But um, these are some of the things that the Alliance did that um, helped. I also brought on board people like people who are into building music cities, which we were hoping to make Accra one. It hasn't been captured yet by, by the UN, um, but we're hoping that um we will we will have that but as it stands we don't um however a few things have happened in the, the past uh, two to three four to five years yeah maybe, yeah that um had brought a lot of people into the country you know so <laughs> you're a prophet uh, you're a mind that. reader <laughs> <laughs> because i was going to ask you that look in this in the same uh, time frame let's say five let's be fair and just say five five yeah. in, within the last five years at the attention of ghana uh, I mean, Ghana has grabbed the attention of the world. Not so long ago, one great news that we got was that UNESCO has even recognized High Life, High Life yes. as, as an official thing from Ghana. Yes. And I think, look, we had, a, we had a global citizen show that got every eyeball fixed on Ghana. And I think Bullery, whose photo is just behind you, I mean, <clears throat> he's part of all the movement going on. Ghana music has rocked the world. I mean, a few individuals have made sure they, they, they rock the world from Shatawali's big collaboration with Beyonce right down to, to getting some BT and I mean, all that, all that. What have we done right in this past five years, even though we are still on the journey? And then how can we sustain it? Because again, under our watch, we saw Azunto come and go like it wasn't a big deal until we lost it. Now when we look back at it, we remember that we ruled the world for that period where Azunto was very hot how do we sustain it first of all i mean i mean that you can answer that later but what have we done right in the last five years that we can still 
leverage on and keep going on so, so, so that sustainability is assured and then how do we yeah how do we make sure we don't lose it again like how we lost as, as yeah I, th- I think good pr um i think we've done well by keeping the image that it's a tourist destination um I was I was living at a point I was living in 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 South Africa mm. and the talk was just about um um year of return and beyond every time exactly and people wanting to come to Ghana yeah. and so that's one of the big things that we've done mm. but I think as an industry if I'm looking at like maybe music we haven't been intentional about it and so just as um, GTA is very intentional about, yes, making Ghana a tourist destination, we should be very intentional about picking key elements that make people come in and then enable these industries. For example, if you don't strengthen the locals when it comes to the industry, people will start coming in and, and bully us. Because mm. even as a continent, we are being bullied. Mm. You know, and so uh, let alone when your market is loose and uh, there's less information, but also we don't take data very serious. And so I think it's also something that we've not done. But yes, um, I've seen that it's also very scattered. But what we've done very well is the good image we've projected that tourist image that we've projected mm. and so it's something we shouldn't lose um, we should make sure that communication continues to to happen and um, it shouldn't just be um, only uh, like a dirty December mm-hmm. be the only thing mm. but it should be like a year there should be like a, a year long plan mm. like throughout the year you know because that brings some good income and then also they shouldn't hold GTA and co- I don't know if it's there. I haven't looked at the figures, but they shouldn't hold back in putting out um, this data, yeah. you know, for yeah. us to be able to tap into. It helps also in getting investors because then if I'm coming in and I'm not Ghanaian, what I can fall on is the information. Right. And so also, um, quote and unquote, gatekeepers should be informed mm. so that when you get a call from any country or anybody who's a potential investor, you have the figures to show them, you have um, the right data to present to them, and they are coming in based on the figures that you 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 give them, you know. Because otherwise, you have an influx of people coming in and not being happy mm. or not being satisfied mm. because the locals haven't been oriented well. And when tourism is so huge, that I mean, going to that conversation will be maybe later. But everybody must be a part of the cycle, from transport to the hotels. To, so it must be a unified thing and so and thankfully all these um these agencies are there they have unions there's a musician union there's um the hoteliers have the s there's contract commission that all of them must be on board because gta alone cannot do it mm. and so all of them must be on board because all when you get to um the airport you go through all these people mm-hmm. and then at night you might find yourself wanting to, you know, go to a nightclub or a bar. And so the bar owners, the, like I said, the locals must be oriented. Because mm-hmm. then we had people uh, tweeting and putting out on so on social media about how they come to Ghana and don't feel that they are in Ghana because yeah. they don't hear much of our music mm-hmm. and what have you. Mm-hmm. It's because, you know, people are opening their their their, their spots and they just want to entertain people but they're not doing it intentionally, intentionally and thinking about you know you know putting ghana in that space they're just thinking charlie make a <laughs> drop sounds make <laughs> i make my money and you know go back <laughs> and so when everybody is included including you and i mm. you know musician media people it cuts across yeah when we buy into the agenda ghana it will make things so easy. Thank you very much for saying it this way. Because, I mean, when we think about pushing the Ghana agenda, we all, we only think about, oh, let's play 100% Ghana music. Let's play this. We come in. For me, it was an embarrassing debate that went on and on and on, <laughs> you know. But uh, thank you. You're bringing our minds to the fact that even in our conversations around tourists, let's be intentional to just promote Ghana. And if you're running a place, uh, be intentional. 
you have to clad your reception with the Ghanaian colors, do it. When they walk in, they may just know they are walking into a place that is ready to provide them uh, authenticity. At the end of the day, you don't do any other genre that is not African or Ghanaian more than those who really own it. Yeah. And so you can champion conversations that are about, it's about the people. You can't be in Ghana and talk about hip hop more than those on the BT board or those on the Grammys. You can't do that more than them. So look inward. That's what uh, Trigmatic is, 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 you know, admonishing us, us all to do. And if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Thursday edition of the Star Drive. And I told you I was excited when the guest was announced to me. It's none other than the man Trigmatic. And we're learning so much from him. Some also said that in promoting that we should give some of our people in the art um, um, diplomatic pass or diplomatic passport, if you like. You know, it's all part of it. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's for it's, it's on a lighter note. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so in in line of that, I've, I've just been handed an em envelope, and uh, when I took a sneak peek, it was about something that I'm not too surprised that you are involved with because as the name Osajefo, and because you are everything authentic and yes. and Ghanaian. Tell us about it. How is it coming up? Uh, yeah, um, I'm super excited about this one. You know, Sajifu's night is tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow at the Alliance Francaise, 6 mm. p.m. The concert starts. We're using that to celebrate the greatness of the only president that really understood um, governance and using the art as, as one of his tools of operation. Um, I think Nkrumah just understood the task. Yeah, you know, I agree. When you look at some of the things that he um, initiated, there are still things that we're benefiting from. Mm. You know, and uh, for me, I, I, I don't know why we, we shouldn't uh, celebrate him. Um, oftentimes we do it on his birthday, but this year we decided to do a dialogue. Oh, on it's a third edition. It's a, it's a third edition, okay. yes. So... Um, this year's edition, we, dis we decided to do a dialogue on the 21st of September, which we already did, and um, where we highlighted some of the good things that Osajifo has done. And um, tomorrow, we are going to celebrate. We are going to still continue to highlight his good works, and uh, we're doing that through music and theater oh. and dance. And, um, yeah, there will be a lot of amazing performances. Yesterday, I was rehearsing with episode and it was just beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so it was myself episode AEC, oh. Josh Black. It's going to be live music. I'm performing with Adrian Pa Band. Ah. Um, I've played with them. Over I have not seen you in a while do this, so why not? I mean, let me say I'm grateful uh, for, the, for, the, for the invitation um, sure. for the whole team. Uh, we'll, we'll be there to see. But I, I love the theme. I mean, celebrating uh, Kwame Nkrumah and his contributions to Ghana's creative um, arts well, sector. Yeah. I mean... The evidence are there, both in <laughs> physical infrastructure, yep. uh, like the you know the Nafti and Co. Um, today at the Sawe, uh, used to be the Ghana uh, whatever film Ghana something film, film yeah something yeah yeah Ghana and film, all that yeah. um, I mean the 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 these things are there for us to see and so why not uh, we can't pretend not to see them and why we can't celebrate them I know it's going for a token uh, but how early should people report tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've been to any of my live shows, yeah. uh, maybe my live concerts, when I say six is six, <laughs> yeah, when I say six is six, if you've been to Al Alliance for any concert, you also know that they themselves have a policy yeah. that they don't go deep into the night. So yeah. it's not going to end like, say, 1 a.m. No. or 12, you know. Mm. It's, um, it's going to be 6 p.m. And it's a story we are telling. And so I have my brother, Nana Sase, who is narrating it through his performances. And so once he starts telling a story, we can't stop. <laughs> so we're going to start at <laughs> six, and it's not going to break. It's going to be back to back, yeah. um, electrifying performances, all the songs that you haven't um, heard in a while, and then new songs, and then even unreleased you, you songs. You have something new um, to share with us before you go, right? Yep, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. There's a new banger. Mm. Um, that uh, we'll talk we'll talk about in a bit. <laughs> yeah. But I'm hoping to see all of you um, come and meet some of my friends, music friends. Like um, yesterday, I was on the phone with my brother Edem. You know, um, some of them will just come and vibe, come and um, you know be entertained. And so I, you know, be there, be a part of greatness. But most importantly, come and learn some of the things that uh, Dr. Nkrumah has done. How did you come up with the lineup? I mean. 
<laughs> you know, I started shaking my head like that. Like, <laughs> how do you come up with these guys? I mean, yeah, I mean, um, episode that you see. And these are people that yeah. um, I vibe with. Right. But then also, I listen to their music okay. and I know what they represent or what they stand for. Um, I, I love these guys. And so, and I think they understand they understand where I'm coming from or what I represent as well. And um, we share a few things in mm. common. So I, I spoke to them and, uh, and I've kept a very good relationship with some of, most of them. Mm. And you see an episode, they're almost on most of the shows that I do. Walasi, you know, these mm. are people mm. I personally have mm. good relationships mm. with. So congrats on the third edition. Thank congrats you. to you. And, uh, um, I know Bolari is listening to you, maybe in the, on the sixth floor. Um, so we're, we're, we're going to come through tomorrow, 6 p.m. Yes. Uh, we'll be there. But tell us about the new joint and let's wrap yeah, up. Yeah, so right. there's a new um, new song and uh, we did it in honor of um, the legend Ebo Taylor, whom we honored in the last edition. So the last edition of Osage Falls Nights, we honored Ebo Taylor. Uh, I forgot to say that um, a very important aspect of the event is that on each event, we honor one music legend. And so we started with, um, I think we did, um, I'll get the name again. And then we did, we've done Ebo Taylor. And so this new song, we did in honor of Ebo Taylor. We got one of his um, records, Achara Brabo, um, and we did a rendition of it. And he himself said, no, I want you to put the voice, my voice on that record. We have it. It was recorded um, um, in South Africa, but mixed and mastered here in Ghana by U-Beats and uh, Genius. And yeah, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> 